video, we will be factoring and solving polynomial functions. Your essential question is how can you use factoring patterns to solve polynomial functions? Now, I need you to remember your factoring friends. Hopefully, you haven't ditched your friends. Now, your factoring friends that we did in Unit 5 are going to be extremely helpful. You are going to use those five factoring friends in addition to new factoring friends that I will give you in the next video. So let's go find our factoring friends. Once upon a time, you were given some factoring friends to help you factor quadratic expressions. And I would suggest you go back and you grab those factoring friends unless you know them really, really well. So you have some old notes with all five factoring friends. You can also go to Frisky Math, and if you go under Algebra 2, Unit 5, 5.2, I created a written tutorial. This written tutorial has all five factoring friends, and these were methods for factoring quadratic polynomials. We're going to expand on these, but just as a review, first of all, when we're factoring quadratics, we're doing it for a specific reason, and that's actually to solve the polynomial or the quadratic equation and find our x intercepts or our solutions. Standard form, and we've got factored form. And as long as you can factor a quadratic, or now we'll extend that to any polynomial equation of any degree, if you can get it into factored form, you'll be able to use your zero product property to find all of your x-intercepts or your solutions. So our first factoring friend was our greatest common monomial factor. That was our best friend. We went to that friend all the time for help. Every single time we had to factor. Our next friend, difference of two squares, was when you had a binomial that was the difference of two squares. You factored that into a sum and difference pattern. Our third friend was when you had a perfect square trinomial, and a perfect square trinomial followed a specific pattern where the first term was a perfect square, the last term was a perfect square, and in order to get the middle term, you took the square root of first and last terms, multiplied them together, and doubled them. And when you factored a perfect square trinomial, you always got the square of a binomial. Our fourth friend was the friend we all love to hate. Uh, this guy's actually not so bad when we've got a leading coefficient equal to one. We just have to look at the constant, find factors of the constant whose sum or difference will give us the middle term. However, his evil twin, guess and check with a leading coefficient not equal to one, this guy gave us a pretty hard time. We had to find factors of both A and C and mix those factors around until we were able to get our middle term. And our last friend was factoring by grouping. And this guy usually had four terms and you were able to group terms that had common factors. So today in this video, we are going to use those old factoring friends to help us factor any polynomial function. So our first example, we are given a function m of x, and it is a trinomial. And the first thing I'm going to do is factor it. Then I'll solve it. Once I have it in factored form, it's going to be really easy to use the zero product property. So I'll go to my first friend, greatest common monomial. Can you help us out? Well, in fact, every single term appears to have a 3x in common. So the first thing I'll do is I'll factor out a 3x. So rewriting m of x as 3x times, now what's left? It's like I've undistributed 3x. So 3x times what gives us the first term? I need an x squared. And 3x times what gives us 6x squared? I need a 2x. And 3x times what gives me negative 45x? That'll be negative 15. Now, I'm not sure if I'm completely factored here. So I'm going to look now at this trinomial, and I'm going to ask myself if I can factor that. It doesn't look like a difference of two squares. It doesn't look like a perfect square trinomial. 
So if anything, it's probably going to be a guess and check. So I need to find factors of 15 that maybe add or subtract to give me two. And in fact, five and three, I can take the difference of those and get two. So I'm going to try and factor this, leaving the three X out there. That's part of my solution, so I need that. I'm now gonna factor this into two binomials using guess and check. I believe I'm going to use the five and the three. My inners give me five X. My outers give me three X. How can I get 2x? I would need to subtract the 3x to get a positive 2x. So I need a negative 3, a positive 5, which in fact will give me that last term of negative 15, a middle term of 2x, and first terms of x squared. All right, so I think I'm completely factored here, but I haven't solved. Now in order to solve this, what I'm gonna need to do is the zero product property. So this is where you set the equation equal to zero, because that's like when y equals zero or your output equals zero, you're actually on the x-axis. So I am going to set my factored form equal to zero. Then I use the zero product property to set each factor equal to zero. And then I solve each of these individual equations. So dividing both sides by three, I get x equals zero. Subtract five from each, and you can do a lot of this in your head. I get x equals negative five, or add three, and you get x equals three. I have now solved it. Factored form versus solving. Now just for fun, let's think about what this polynomial function looks like when we graph it. First of all, my leading coefficient is three, so it's positive and my degree is three, so I know it'll probably be down on the left and up on the right. I also now know my x-intercepts. So if I were to graph this, and I'll just do a really simple graph, I'm gonna have x equals zero as a root, negative five is a root, and positive three is a root. I also know my y-intercept is zero because there is no constant here. So my function might look something like this. Now, of course, I don't know where those critical points lie, and I could do an input-output table to find those critical points. However, I have a really good understanding of what this graph looks like of this polynomial function. Moving to B, we're going to do a similar type of thing. So I'm gonna look at this polynomial function and I'm gonna to go to my first friend. Greatest common monomial factor, can you help us out? And in fact, he can, right? Every single term here has a greatest common monomial factor of three x squared. So I am going to factor f of x into three x squared. I'm undistributing the three x squared. What's left? Well, I need an x cubed. 3x squared times a positive 2x would give me the, sec the 6x cubed. And 3x squared times a negative 6 would give me the negative 18x squared. I don't think there's much more I can do here. If you notice this trinomial here, it is not a quadratic. We do not know how to factor this. However, I am going to give you some tools in the near future to be able to work with this polynomial function and either get some more roots or figure out if there are imaginary roots. So now we'll use zero product property, setting our output equal to zero. Now I can solve part of this. So I have two factors. I can solve the fact that 3x squared equals zero. Now this root, which is a cubic root, at this point we don't have enough tools to solve it, but eventually we will in the near future. So right now I can say to myself, if I divide both sides by three, I get x squared equals zero. I know in fact that one of my x-intercepts is zero. I probably already knew that because that was also my constant, so that was gonna be my y-intercept. I also know some things about this graph. I know that it's an x to the fifth. It's got a positive leading coefficient, 
So I do know that it will be down on the left and up on the right and go through the origin. But we don't know enough once again to find all my roots. We will get to that. All right, next example. Notice this one has four terms. Interesting. First thing I'm gonna do though is ask myself, hey, greatest common monomial friend, can you help me out? And looking at all four terms in this quadrinomial, they don't all have a common factor. However, what if I grouped them? So I notice that the first two terms can be grouped and they happen to have a greatest common monomial factor. And I also notice that the second two terms can be grouped. Now be very careful here. This is a subtraction. I am going to group, so in other words, that is a negative nine. I'm keeping the negative with that third term. But this is not a multiplication problem. There should be an addition in between there. Now I have two groupings of binomials. In each group of binomials, I am going to factor out the greatest common monomial factor. So for g of x, looking at my first grouping, I notice that they have an x squared in common. So I am going to factor out an x squared, and that's going to leave me in this first grouping with an x minus 2. Now in the second grouping, my goal is going to be to get this exact same binomial factor left. So what can I factor out of that second grouping to be left with an x minus two? That's right, I'm going to factor out a greatest common monomial of negative nine. Doing that leaves me with a binomial factor of x minus two. Notice it's exactly the same binomial factor. So now in each grouping, Right, I've only got two terms here. Let's see here. This is my first term. This is my second term. In each of those terms, I have a common binomial factor of x minus two. So now I'm going to factor out that x minus two. Now that's gonna leave me with what? Well, x minus two times what gives me this first term x squared is what I'm missing. So I am going to multiply that by x squared. And then x minus two times what would give me the second term? That's right, I need a negative nine. I am not done factoring here. So I use factor by grouping. Now look at my second binomial factor, x squared minus nine. That is a difference of two squares. Right, I can write this as a base of x squared and a base of three squared, and it's the difference of those two squares. So when I factor a difference of two squares, I end up with a sum and difference pattern where those bases are my terms. And I still have my first factor of x minus two. Now I'm gonna solve that. So I do that by taking each of those factors. Basically I do that by setting my equation equal to zero because when y equals zero, I'm on the x-axis. So I will set my equation equal to zero. Then I'll use the zero product property for each of those factors. and then I will solve, and I will do this in my head. So I have three x-intercepts, which makes sense because it is a cubic polynomial. Looking at this cubic polynomial, my leading coefficient is one, so I know that my end behavior will be down on the left and up on the right. Uh, I also know that my y-intercept is 18, right? My constant is 18. Interesting. So let's go ahead and just get a visual representation, a quick sloppy one, just to have some understanding of what's going on here. So these are my x-intercepts, which I just found by factoring and using the zero product property. 
I know that my y-intercept is up here. Well, it probably is higher up than that, but let's just, for sake of space. I know that it needs to be down on the left and up on the right. And I'm not 100% sure exactly where my critical points are, but I can do that by finding more inputs in their outputs. But this is a pretty general idea of what this graph looks like. So we have just reviewed some of your old friends. And if you are struggling with any of these old friends, I encourage you to go back and practice them. Get extra help, ask a friend, ask me. You're gonna need them moving forward. We've got 